Ooh, no bad. They say cleanliness is next to penliness. And I got some pens that need to be cleaned. So I thought I'd show you a few tricks that I use, maybe something you haven't done before. Let's get these shiny and clean. So maybe you've cleaned your pens several times, but you use them quite a bit. You've changed lots of inks and you want to give them a thorough cleaning. Or someone won the pen in the giveaway, you got to clean it out real nice to send it off to them. Or we have a pen that you've left ink sit in it for quite some time. You haven't been thorough on your cleaning and you think, oh boy, this one's going to be a little nasty. Let's chat about different ways to clean them. Some simple tools and then some kind of cool tools that you can look into when cleaning out your fountain pens. So obviously with a cartridge converter or a piston or whichever, you empty the ink, turn the piston down, push that plunger, whatever your system is, get the ink out, put it into some water and cycle it back and forth. Get the water in and out of there. Maybe run it under a faucet first to kind of clean it. So that's a real basic way to do it. Kind of takes a while doing it that way. Um, if you're using like this, a cartridge converter pen, you, you can pop the converter out and I don't have it with me. So imagine it's here, but I'll show you a picture. You get one of those bulb syringes. So whether it's for uh, cleaning out your ear or if you've got a little kiddo, you got to have the one to suck the snot out because they can't blow their noses, right? When they get little colds. Um, you fill that with water, you put it into the, into the feed section, give it a big blast, and literally one shot from that sucker will flush out the whole pen super quick. So those are some basic ones. But then there's some kind of cool gear that you can get to do a real thorough job when it's needed. So there's always the next level, and you can get yourself one of these, an ultrasonic cleaner. So this is a, a, a hobby style one. You can get uh, professional style ones. You'll see ones if you go to, the, say, the jewelers to get some uh, jewelry cleaned out. They'll chuck it in one of these, a much nicer version. I've used ones in the chemistry labs, proper ones like that. And there's a lot more uh, bells and whistles on them. They're a lot more powerful as well. But uh, we're just dealing with little pens. Go easy on them. So a little hobby jobby like this is pretty good. You can pick it up on Amazon. I forget how much this was, but maybe it's $35 or something. This is the Magnus Sonic CD2800. It's got the Manuel 35 watts of true ultrasonic power, not the fake kind. 42,000 cycle energy wave quiet. <laughs> Love it. So my guess is it should be 42,000 hertz. So how an ultrasonic cleaner works is it shoots sound waves through the liquid. And what that does is it creates a, a process called cavitation. So it's little bubbles, micro bubbles form on the surface and then uh, they'll grow and they'll pop. And there's like a little mini void. There's a, now a vacuum. So stuff has to fill in. It's got to take in that vacuum. So if it's happening on the surface of a pen, let's show you a pen. So we put it in there, all right? And those little cavitation bubbles are all over this thing. Let me zoom in a bit so you can get the idea. There'll be a little mini vacuum right next to that. So it's something's got to fill it and sucks out some ink and bits like that. So that's, uh, you see cavitation happen with uh, large uh, boat motors, the propeller motors. And that's just on a large scale. What we actually want is tiny to get in all the little nooks and crannies in here. We're going to send the sound pulses through the water. Why is it called ultrasonic? Because it's the, the frequency range. It's typically outside. Uh, you will hear some of it. It's definitely audible. But there could be some of the waves are just kind of in that edge of uh, what we can hear as humanoids who are trying to clean our pens. So um, let's chat a little bit about these and uh, show you how good of a job it does. We'll do some before and after. So this is just some info underneath. I just thought for a quick second while we're here, let's just, uh huh. How can we not? Hmm. Okay, here we are. Pulled the board back. 
this is the gadget, the gadget right here. So I wanted to see what uh, type of ultrasonic cleaner this was. There's two types. Let me explain those really quick. So all this stuff is used to drive something called a transducer. There are two types. Wasn't sure which one this had. Had an idea. and uh, But one is it called a magnetostrictive, based on the fact if you have a, a, a magnetic field and you put iron-rich metals in that field, it can expand and contract that metal, thus causing these waves, these ultrasonic waves. The other one is a piezoelectric. That's what this guy is. So there's a crystal inside. You apply current to it and it vibrates. So I wasn't sure right away, so I looked up the schematic for it and I found it hunted around and there it is. You could see it driving a crystal. Uh, I couldn't see it anywhere on this board. So I was saw some leads come down off. Here we go, they connect. And what do you know, you can pick one of these up on uh, AliExpress for a couple bucks, five bucks maybe. That's uh, the whole meat and potatoes right there of this whole device. What's making this thing vibrate, causing those waves and causing the cavitation and therefore cleaning your pen. So a quick little <laughs> nitpick on cheap products like this. So to go through all the trouble of putting this stuff on here, this is called RTV. So this is electrical grade silicone, essentially. So if you want to put it on to components and stuff like that, uh, it's really meant to help with strain relief or if there's vibration, say on like these guys here from a high vibration environment, they should be there should be RTV on these guys. But they're putting it on here and all these little fly wires so that for vibration, they don't snap off. You don't have to worry about the solder coming off. It's going to break here. Okay, it's going to break around this area here. So they go through all the trouble of putting the stuff on here, but they don't even get it where it counts. It should go over top. Same on this eight. This is the AC line coming in. It should go over top to help give it a bit of a stream relief. So if it jiggles, it's not going to jiggle and snap off there. It can. This can help absorb that. So, anyways, let's just go. Let's get back to pens. Okay. So here we go. You got this little guy on off. <laughs> Dual modes. Uh, it's got an automatic built-in three-minute timer, a little basket. So what you do, you fill it up. we got a max line. Put your pens and materials in here. Drop it in. Close the lid. Turn it on and let it go. You do not use any type of solvents or weird stuff like that. We're dealing with fountain pens here. So just water. You can put a little bit of soap if you like. Just a few drops will do you. Don't go crazy hot. It is sending waves through, so it's moving the water molecules, which will generate heat. Now, you have to do a lot of it, especially it's only three minutes worth, so it's not going to turn to boiling water instantly. But uh, no need to use hot water. You can use cold or even lukewarm. That's fine. And you might run your pens a couple times in there. So let's uh, get going here. So one, you know, don't chuck the pen in there full of ink and not even care. Um you know, do a, a basic cleaning on it first, then you put it in there to get those last little bits of grub and grime that are just stuck on there. Okay, so I broke the pens down, took them apart. So take them apart, you know, as far as you can go, or at least as far as you're willing to go. Um, See, so case in point, this little lammy, you could just you pop out the uh, converter, take the pen apart, and put this in all as one unit, or if you feel comfortable, I couldn't find the scotch tape, but you just put a little piece of tape on the nib. There you go. Slide it off. And now you just separated the nib there too. So if you can do stuff like that, the further you take it down, uh, it'll get cleaned a little further. All my converters that are in here, uh, you want it, what you want to do is fill them with water. So we got some hot, you know, warm water in here with a touch of soap in it. You can use pen wash if you want uh, to save on the cost of filling this whole thing with pen wash and all getting dirty. You can just get, uh, let's say a little shot glass. You can use regular water, put it in there, fill that little shot glass with the pen cleaner and put the thing in there that you want that you're focusing on to really clean. It's Cause the ultrasonic waves will, will pass through the glass into that other little container that's got the uh, pen wash. If you have really hard water where you live, I guess you could go to distilled I have relatively soft water here as well. Um, same thing, so the piston filler here, you'd want to put it in, fill it up 
with some of the soapy water. Same thing for your, your vacuum fillers. In this case, it'll get past that seal when it's in there. So anyways, we're going to dunk it in and uh, turn it on. Get everything in there. All right. And we'll let the magic begin. Oh, plug it in. All right, now it's plugged in. We've got some beautiful mood lighting. And the most exciting noise. Let's have a little look to see what's going on in here. Okay, so obviously now you got to dry stuff off, put it all back together, place for everything, everything in its place. But you can see stuff like this converter. Yeah, there's a little water in there, but um, focus, come on. All right, so this was my first or second fountain pen. So this converter's been around a bit, it's been used a bit, no stainage. Really helps get that out. Um, even my Lamy 2000, over time, it gets a bit of a glossy look to it. This gets it right back to kind of factory out of the box. Oh, a surprise in there. Look at that. <laughs> Looking for that nip, for that feed. But yeah, so even, even on my Visconti Homo sapien, for example, because it absorbs water and grease and oils and stuff like that, um, it's good for getting pens back to original condition. So I ran these a couple times. Uh, I think maybe I did three cycles, something like that. If you get one that can do heat, I would not use the heat. I would keep the heat off. These are delicate. Don't do this. So, like you gotta be super careful with vintage pens. If it's any of that hardened rubber material, no, 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 no. All bets are off with that. But on these types of pens, these types of materials, pretty safe thing to do, you know, especially if you got metal pens, but really does a great job cleaning off the nibs and feeds converters and like i said um, just make sure you have them filled up there you go so now there's how you use an ultrasonic cleaner how the thing works and a couple tips there hope you found that useful whether you're new or old we'll catch you next time thanks for all the views and everyone who's liking and subscribing